Hey everybody, it's Jasmine, and today is gonna to be an actual makeup tutorial. I am really excited about this. As you guys know, makeup tutorials are one of my favorite videos to film, but no one watches them, which is fine because this is just one of those things where I'm just doing for me because I like it, all right? Um, and I'm just really excited to get into this because I'm also gonna show you guys a hair routine, but also hair styling portion at the end of the video because that's one question that I've been getting a lot recently, so I just thought, boom put it all together in a video so let's go ahead and get started before we get fully started into my transformation a portion of this video is sponsored by Focalore so I am going to be using their sunrise palette their blush as well as some of their lipsticks to kind of just finish off this look for you guys okay quick throwback if you're a real OG watcher don't you guys remember that one time where I was absolutely obsessed with the Focalore ever-changing palette yeah, I had to recently declutter her because she was really, really old, but that was like my all-time favorite palette. And um, with that being said, I do like the palette formula of their eyeshadow. So this is what we're going to be working with for this video. It's very similar to the Huda Beauty Rose Gold palette, I believe that's what it's called. Um, just a lot of nice, warm, rosy tones. So we're just going to be working with this. And I'm also going to not be using any fake lashes today because I just haven't really been in the mood and also my lash line is really sensitive so we are just going to do a very natural <laughs> look I always say that in every video but we're gonna try and make it natural this time of course I'm gonna prime my skin with the Juno & Co moonshine miracle cream this is one of my favorite primers it hydrates the skin and blurs out the pores before we settle into foundation, I'm taking the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, and this one is in the shade Fair. I'm applying this on the high points of my face where I would normally apply concealer. I'm going to blend it out with my Kaja sponge, and then we'll move on into foundation. I'm feeling like we should do all Charlotte Tilbury for the base, so I have their Airbrush Flawless Foundation, and this one is in the shade 4 Warm. I do believe this is a little bit lighter than my skin tone, but that's okay because we'll work with it. If you've never used this foundation, the texture is very similar to Urban Decay Stay Naked. However, I feel like there's a little bit more give to it as opposed to a watery texture. So this is almost like a fusion of Urban Decay Stay Naked and the Tarte Face Tape. It's very interesting and I do feel like it does last on the skin for a very long time. For concealer, we're using the Shiseido Self-Refreshing Concealer in the shade 202 Light. Now I'm just going to apply this in my normal concealer areas because I just want to even out my skin just a little bit more. I only did one pump of foundation on my skin so I kind of want to just build up where necessary. For my stick contour, we're going to do the ColourPop No Filter Stick in the shade Dark 165N. This is one of my favorite items to kind of do a cream contour with, even though it's not a neutral or cool shade. It's actually pretty warm on the skin, so it kind of just gives me a nice bronze. See, now that the bronzer is blended in with the concealer and the foundation, the foundation doesn't look as light as it used to, and that's just my trick on how to create a flawless base pre-powder. We haven't gone in with powder yet, and I am gonna be wearing a mask today, so today's actually gonna be a really fun day. My new mattress is coming in. Yes, I spent quite a pretty penny on a new mattress, and my mattress that I currently sleep on is actually two years older than me. I'm 23. This mattress is 25 years old and it definitely has springs and I definitely feel like a 70 year old woman because every single time I wake up I get so much back pain so I have that to do today and also my boyfriend and I were going to go on a date. We haven't gone on a date in a really long time. Every time I come back on YouTube I always say my boyfriend and I are going out to a date but honestly it's the only reason that it gives me to actually dress up and to actually do my makeup so i know it might seem that we go on so many dates but we don't we don't okay to set my entire face in place we're gonna go in with the charlotte tilbury airbrush flawless finish the micro powder in the shade 2 medium now unfortunately this line only has four shades which i think is so ridiculous but it really does work and if you can find a shade that works for you I guarantee you, your face is gonna look so freaking flawless, just as the name suggests. And when you use all Charlotte Tilbury products together, your face looks so good and smooth. 
I'm gonna take a break for my face and I'm gonna go straight into eyebrows. This is the Touch and Soul Browza Super Proof Gel Brow Pencil. And this one is in the shade number three, Mink Wink, which is the darkest shade that they have. So as a refresh, here is the Sunrise Palette. This is what it looks like, just all these beautiful mauve tones, perfect for fall. Now, I really love the fact that there are some really beautiful shimmers and some glitters and a lovely array of matte tones. Really quickly, I want to go ahead and swatch some of these colors. So the other day, I actually used this one, Pinwheel Galaxy, all over my eyes, and it was so freaking stunning. So this is what that swatch looks like. It's almost a duochrome because, I don't know, it shifts to pink, but it also has a little bit of silver to it. My camera is not really focusing, which is kind of pissing me off, but that's what that shade looks like. It's really beautiful. Given how affordable this palette is, the pigments are actually really intense. So here's the orange um, that I also used the other day, and there is that swatch. Obviously, it's a dry swatch, so it doesn't really look that great, and I also don't have an eye base on my hand. But on the eyes, when used with the brush, it's really, really good. Trust me on this. Um, and then let's actually swatch a color I've never used before, which is this shimmery orange called Marigold. That one's like your basic shimmery orange, honestly. That one's like not that amazing to me, but it's still pretty cute. Um, let, ooh, let's swatch a glitter. Let's do this one called Steampunk. Glittery. Okay. And just as I thought, it's not super smooth, but, 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 there is a shade in here called Limitless, and I guess that's your base for your glitter, so... Let's try that again because I'm actually very curious because I have never actually used any like cream shades in a palette before, you know? Um, when palettes come with like brow shades or um, like brow pomade shades or even like lip products, I never want to use them because I'm like, ew, that's weird. Okay, so there is Limitless and we're going to dip back into, is that Steampunk? And I'm just going to slide my finger like I did before. I really wanted it to catch all of the fallout that was also on my finger. Um, yeah, it definitely works. I'm not personally gonna use glitter today because like I said in the beginning of the video, natural. We are going in for an all natural look. So here is my vision. I wanna do Give Me Mocha, this brown here, mixed in with this orange, Himalayan orange. And if I ever need to deepen it up, I think I want to go in with chocolate martini. And then as for the shimmer, I want to go in with champagne. Very easy, very simple. And I kind of want to go in depth on how I blend today. So there's going to be a treat for you guys who are beginners. We're going to take Give Me Mocha on a big fluffy brush and we are going to coat the entire brush all the way through, tap off some of the excess, and we are going to tap that on the eyes and then blend it out. Now the reason why we're tapping is because we don't have a dry base on our eyes. I do have concealer and foundation on my eyes, which is a wet base. So what you want to do is you want to pack that color on so you don't get any fallout and then you want to blend it out. With the same method and the shade Himalayan Orange, we're actually going to take a smaller blending brush. We are going to tap it into the outer corner of the eye and then we are going to blend it through the crease. With the lightest shade in the palette called Pure Nude, we're going to take that on an eyeshadow brush. And this is probably the easiest blending method. So if you feel like you took your eyeshadow too high, you're going to take the lightest shade in the palette and you're going to blend it out. Using my card trick, I'm gonna press a piece of paper onto my eyes in the outer corner, and I'm going to use this as a stencil to create a smoked out liner with the shade Chocolate Martini. So this is going to be my smoked out wing liner with eyeshadow. Using my finger, I'm gonna take champagne and I'm going to tap this all over my eyelid to add a pop of brightness. The other brush that I had the orange on, I'm just gonna dust that right on the bottom. To give this look more pop, I'm just going to take my highlighter, which is the Real Her Keep Going, and I'm going to apply this into the inner corner of my eyes, and I'm actually going to drag this halfway down onto my lower lash line. My mascara routine is a little bit extra, but I'm going to show you guys how I get my long lashes with just mascara. So I actually use two eyelash curlers. 
very very extra but there's a reason why I use two now the first one is my velour eyelash curler I like this one because I feel like it crimps my lashes really well but it does not get to the root of my lashes like the Shiseido curler does so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to crimp my lashes with the velour and then I'm going to lift my lashes with the Shiseido I'm just gonna scoot my tooch up closer to the camera so you guys could see so I go all throughout the length just slowly crimping the lashes. But once I do Shiseido, I will take this all the way to the base of my lash and I will kind of just follow it up with the crimp. And you can kind of see a little bit of a difference. Hopefully you guys can. So in order for my lashes to stick straight up, I go in with a waterproof mascara any waterproof mascara because I'm gonna follow it up with a regular mascara to kind of just give me the length and volume and everything that I need so this is going to be the base this is the Ico sport waterproof mascara so I just look down into a mirror and I will just do one solid coat and this mascara alone doesn't really offer much as far as length and volume but it does hold the lashes in place which is why I like it now I'm gonna go in with the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara. This one is very dry, so I find that it thickens up my lashes pretty well and adds a little bit of length in there as well. So I start at the base and I wiggle and I just go straight up because I want my lashes to be as high as possible. So here's what the mascara looks like with the waterproof on first and then the Lights Camera Lashes on top of that. You guys can see a difference with my lashes, which is great. Um, and I just feel like what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a couple more layers of the waterproof one to just lock it in. So I'm gonna sandwich the regular mascara in between the two waterproof ones. I don't know, it's just what works for me at the moment, uh, but that's just my routine. I zoomed you guys out, and now that I'm looking at the eyes all together with the face, I do think that I accidentally extended my wing far too out, but that's okay. Honestly, no one's here to judge me. So I'm gonna finish off my face with bronzer, blush, and highlight. I know we already have the cream product, but we're gonna go ahead and set it because I am wearing a mask today. So let's go in with the e.l.f bronzer palette as you see here I do have a lot that hit pan actually this one up here hit pan too but you can't even see it on camera uh, my goal is to finish these products by the end of the year but I don't think that'll be possible but if I could hit pan on this last one I think that'll just make my whole life so the method that I do for my bronzer is I literally just pat it on the cheeks first I go from ear all the way to I want to say where my eye ends Okay, this is just mapping out where I want it, right? Just this area. And then I'm going to go ahead and buff it into the skin. And this is going to easily blend, just like that. Everybody's forehead is different, but what I do for my forehead personally is I like to focus it on the high points right here because I just uh, may or may not have a receding hairline I don't know kind of insecure about it but kind of not I don't know um, so I just go here and just connect it a little bit up at the top but really mainly focusing a lot of the padding motions right in this area here and whatever is left on the brush I literally just take it on the sides of my nose. I don't really nose contour, which is um, something that, I don't know, I'm not really fond of. I kind of just like having a little bit of color there, um, and that's just pretty much what I do for my bronzing. So here is the Focalore Sunkissed Monochromatic Blush Duo. This one is in the shade number four. I love a shimmery blush, okay? And the good thing about this duo is that this one is matte and this one is shimmery, so... Of course, we're gonna go in with this one. I think that anyone can pull off an orange blush if worn correctly. I think orange blushes are very beautiful on warm skin and I love the effect that it gives because naturally when I'm in the sun, I kind of give off more of like a red undertone as opposed to pink. So being that orange is really close to red, it looks more natural. And as you see here, I am just patting it on my cheeks. Personally, 
I like bringing my cheeks to the apples and then blending it up. Now, I know there are a lot of people who completely avoid the apples of the cheek to give themselves like a lifted effect. I like it so that when I smile, you see it, you see the blush, and then you also see the sheen of highlight from that shimmery blush. That's just my personal preference and it's always been that way. And then I am just going to take the rest on my nose, a little bit of color, and also I think that it works out better when I am wearing a mask because if my foundation or anything comes off, at least it's going to be the blush and bronzer first before foundation. See what I'm saying? Now for the highlight, I'm just going to use the one that I used in my inner corner, which is the Real Her Keep Going. And then for my highlight, I always like to smile and I take that natural sheen from the blush and that's where I apply my highlight because in all directions, you will see your highlight. You see it from the side, you see it from the front, you see it when you're just over here or okay like you see it everywhere so that's the reason why i like to place my highlight there i know some people hate it um some people's face shapes can't accommodate that um but that's just my personal preference in case you have a similar face shape to mine it's all coming together and it's looking really good. Now, I do have two lipsticks from Folklore um, that I really wanted to use today. So the first one is 000. And I thought this one was super pretty because it has like an orangey tint to it. And then there's this one and this one's 104. This one is definitely more of like a mauve tone and I really do like the formula. I think it stays on the lips as more of a velvet formula. It smells like coffee, which is very surprising to me because I've never had a lipstick that smelled like coffee. And um, as a matter of fact, fun fact, I don't drink coffee. So this is not my cup of tea. I'm going to figure it out after I do this lip liner. This one is by Shiseido. This is beige. And I'm just gonna line the lips as usual. This color is so close to my natural lip color, but that's gonna be the beauty of it. So whenever I have like a bolder lip color like this, typically I like to line my lips with something lighter because it needs something to blend into, in my opinion, to make it not look super dramatic. So I think I'm kind of leaning more towards the mauve because usually I never go for mauve. So, here we go, this is 104. I'm just gonna slowly build her because I am not used to wearing these type of shades at all. That's very pretty, that's very nice. See how diffuse the lip line looks because I did that uh, beige lip liner it does not look too sharp and that's what I was going for and that's what I like doing whenever I want to do more of like a natural look just kind of diffusing that color wherever possible setting spray of choice is the Catrice long-lasting prime and fine fixing spray this is actually one of my holy grail drugstore setting sprays listen the hair portion is going to be a little bit extensive but it's what works for me and I feel like I could actually get away with it within about 10 minutes. So I, you know, the more you do it, the faster it is. Um, so yes, I did shower this morning and before I put my hair in the little microfiber wrap, which is from Shop Masse, by the way, link in bio, I also put these two products in my scalp to just marinate so that my scalp wouldn't itch later on in the day. So the first one is actually a really affordable product and these are both from Sephora. So this one is by The Inky List and this is their Hyaluronic Acid Scalp Serum. And this one is really, really amazing. It's only a couple bucks. And I feel like it makes a huge difference because if you are like me, your scalp is very dry, it's very itchy. And the only thing to really combat that is something hydrating. This is just very mild hyaluronic acid and it just works really well on the scalp. Alongside this, I wanted to really combat more of, um, 
I guess like the flaky and itchiness portion because it, it kind of flared up recently. So I went in with my Brio Geo Scalp Revival. I've already gone through a couple of these. So I believe this one might be either my second or third bottle. It's really amazing. Brio Geo has a lot of great hair care products that I deeply enjoy. Now I have used um, their Scalp Revival stuff in the shower this morning. So I did the Scalp Revival uh, Scrub Shampoo. And then I also did the um, After Shampoo Mask. It's still in the Scalp Revival line. Um, they don't really have much in that line. So uh, it's very self-explanatory. So I just scrubbed my scalp and I put in the mask afterwards, let it soak in for up to 10 minutes. I rinsed it out, came out the shower, put these two in the scalp, and now we are ready to style. So to protect the actual ends of my hair from getting damaged, I do like using Olaplex. I know, oh, she's bougie. Okay, but this one is the number six and this one is a leave-in smoothing cream. This helps to help dry your hair faster and it also just helps replenish like frizz and make it feel nice and soft. Uh, so this is something that my sister put me on and I'm really, really enjoying it. So I usually take about this much, not too much. This is the length of my hair currently. So I don't really use a whole, whole lot because also I don't want to waste it. So I kind of just run it through my hair. I actually did not brush my hair because I heard that if you brush your hair when your hair is still wet or warm, then you can um, brush out like some healthy hairs. So I kind of want to avoid that as much as possible. As far as hair tools are concerned, I have two. And it's a little extra, but I think it really helps me as far as itchiness is concerned and just having a longer lasting hairstyle, honestly. Um, so first we're gonna take a hair dryer. This one's the Irresistible Me hair dryer. And I'm gonna focus this more towards the scalp area to really dry it out. Now, if you think about it, think about how mushrooms form when wet, right? Like they like to form in humid area so say you sleep with your hair wet you kind of have like that mushy moist texture so of course your hair is gonna itch because it's prone to now fungal bacteria mm -hmm. mushrooms think of that um, but if you dry it out and say you sleep right after you are less prone to having fungal bacteria um, and that's just the way I like to think of it obviously there's more to it that's just that's just my logic. And then to actually style the ends of my hair, I have this Revlon um, blow dry curler thing. I really have no idea what the name is, but I will obviously find it on the internet and I will link it down below. I know that when I talk about hair care, it's always super extensive because I really have no knowledge really about hair care. I'm more of like a beauty makeup fanatic if anything. So talking about hair is just something so out of the ordinary for me, which is why I feel like I have to explain extra slow. But um, I hope that these visuals actually give you an idea of what I do in my routine and hopefully it works out for you too. I just sectioned off my hair on the crown and then the middle portion very simple. So now we're left with the bottom section here. So my technique is pretty much to comb it through a couple of times before I actually start it. So I actually have it on high heat just to really blow dry that area and to really uh, heat style it in place. Then following that I just take the ends and I just roll it up through the actual brush and then I will keep it there for a couple of seconds and then I will switch it to the cool heat so that it could have a chance to cool and set. Uh, pretty simple and this method only really takes me about like 10 minutes for the whole head. For the top section of my hair, I repeat the same process. The only thing that's different is that I am working away from my face. This entire time I've been curling the wand in towards my face, but this time we're gonna go outwards just to give that curtain bang effect. My last step to styling my hair is just really silly. I kind of just put all of my hair in front of my face and I will just touch up any of the extra hairs that I feel like needs touch up. So um, the front section, the bang section, I always curl it away from my face again and then more towards like the back of my head, I'll curl those in again. And that's just to make sure that they all kind of flow together um, the way I want it to. But here is the finished hair and makeup. Very, very simple, nothing crazy. It's just me, 
honestly. So I hope you guys all really enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you're going to try this one out at home. And thank you so much to Folklore for sponsoring a portion of this video. It's greatly appreciated. And honestly, I haven't really been upset with many Folklore products, surprisingly. So this is just such a dream come true. So thank you so much. Um, and as always, I love you all so much. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Thank <laughs> you.